In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Dear friends, on this great feast of the two apostles, St. Peter and Paul, with the Church Universal, we celebrate the beginning of the Holy Church of Christ in Rome. In a way, Rome existed before St. Peter and Paul travelled there, preached the Gospel, and died as martyrs. It was two brothers, twins in fact, Romulus and Remus, who, according to the legend, founded Rome. There is an eloquent parallel and contrast between these two men, Romulus and Remus, some eight centuries before St. Peter and St. Paul, and the two great apostles. Romulus and Remus, according to legend, were the posterity of one who had fled Ilion, Troy, in Asia, and later on founded Rome. Of course, St. Peter and St. Paul also came not from Ilion, Troy, but from Zion, Jerusalem, also in Asia. And like Romulus and Remus, they ended up in Rome. Romulus and Remus were abandoned, in fact betrayed by their uncle, and left to die. And to survive, they drank milk from a she-wolf. St. Peter and St. Paul drank the precious blood of the Lamb instead. Finally, when they disagreed, Romulus killed his twin brother Remus. When they disagreed, St. Paul reproached St. Peter, but then submitted and acknowledged the primacy of the head of the Apostles. Dear friends, what a wonder and a cause for thanksgiving to realize that it has pleased God to save us not only through a spiritual doctrine, not only through his example in the Holy Gospels, but, and with all these important things, to make them available to us through an institution through a visible society founded in a particular place, that is in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost, and rooted from the first generation of apostles at what was the very center of power and influence, the capital of the Roman Empire, Rome. We have no idea what it meant at the time, that single word, Rome. It was the climax of power, civilization, wealth. To be in Rome was something very desirable. To become a Roman citizen was also something very much sought after. I like to imagine that day when St. Peter and later St. Paul arrived in Rome. It was unnoticed. Certainly the uh, first converts to Christianity, who perhaps were already there, having traveled from Jerusalem or other places, would have known that the fisherman was coming. But it was not yet tolerated as a religion. It was in fact persecuted and soon in a bloody manner. And therefore the apostles arrived in quiet. St. Paul is a prisoner asking to stand before the emperor for his life and St. Peter as a clandestine. We can picture St. Peter arriving perhaps by boat at Ostia, the harbour of Rome, and then making his way to the city walls entering the gates. 
never perhaps was the entrance of a man less noticeable and at the same time never was the entering of a man into the capital of an empire of greater meaning and consequence for that empire itself. Because that little man walking in the dust unnoticed is the vicar of Christ and he is as empowered by Christ himself as we heard in the Holy Gospel today. He is about to change history. He is about to turn the capital of the pagan world into the seat of love. He's about to give the church its first official and universal position. Friends, let us ask St. Peter to pray for us to continue to guide, inspire the entire church. We pray, of course, for the successor of Peter, Pope Francis. We pray for all of us in times of distress and sometimes of great difficulty that we might remember the assurance given by our blessed Lord to St. Peter in the very act of and trusting in with the keys of the church, keys of the kingdom. The gates of hell shall not prevail over the church of Christ. These are the very words of the Lord, founder of the church. Was our Lord perhaps not aware that not very long after St. Peter himself would deny him three times for fear of a servant in the courtyard of the high priest while his master was put in jail and mocked by the mob? Our Lord knew that very well. He even predicted it. But as our Lord assured, he would bestow his own grace and power upon St. Peter and his successor, that he should remain faithful and continue to act in the person of Christ as his vicar. Friends, the Church is not essentially a human institution, it is a divine one. The head of the Church is Christ himself, and the Pope is only the visible head. The soul of the Church, as the mystical body of Christ, is the third person of the Holy Trinity, the Holy Ghost. The weapons of the Church the empire of love are the seven sacraments instituted by Christ himself and whose power derive immediately from him. Friends, therefore, when we see the weaknesses, the flaws, even in our shepherds, even sometimes at the highest level, because not every pope is beatified or canonized, Friends, let us not lose hope. Let us listen to the words of Christ and through an act of faith, of hope, of charity, let us reiterate our trust and belonging to the only church founded by the Lord Jesus, that governed by Peter and his successor and the bishops and clergy in explicit union with them. On this day, which is also the patronal feast of the priestly fraternity of St. Peter, I would like to express our gratitude to God for the ministry, the work that has been accomplished in nearly 33 years. Our priestly fraternity began in very troubled times to keep alive the Roman traditions of the Church in full, visible communion with the Vicar of Christ at the time, Pope John Paul II. Started by a handful of twelve priests, through the mercy of God and the prayer of you, the faithful, 
we have grown in number reaching 500 now and please God also in wisdom and sanctity we have been able to give the sacraments to countless people on several continents and this always according to these Roman traditions which we cherish. I thank you for your prayers and support. I'm also speaking to you who are praying with us through live Mass. I know that here in the pews and abroad there are many members of the Confraternity of St. Peter, our international prayer network for vocations. There are over 7,000 of them in the world. Your prayers are essential to help us be always more faithful to the mission entrusted to us by God through the Pope, through the Church. Let us, dear friends, pray also for many priestly vocations. It is a joy to have with me in the sanctuary here at St. Mary's as I speak three young men who have been called by God on the way to the altar to become priests. Please God. Let us pray for many more. As we know, our country, which used to be Catholic, is no more. Which used to be Christian, is no more. The main concern of our fathers, the bishops, is to close down churches without losing too much money. Friends, we must change this, not because we are capable of anything by ourselves, but because God wants it. We must convert the land, bring it back to Christ and our Blessed Lady, to bring it back fully to Peter. It is not enough to have a Catholic Church in every city. What we want is every church in the land to be Catholic, to be under Peter. What we want is every soul not yet acknowledged with Christ, not yet following the Blessed Lord and the Church, to discover the Gospel, to say yes to love, yes to the Lord, yes to Our Lady, and to become not only Christian, but Catholic, not only Catholic, but Roman Catholic. This is what God wants. This is why he founded the church. This is why he sent the two columns of the church, St. Peter and Paul, to conquer, through their sacrifice, the pagan empire of Rome. Friends, armed with such powerful witnesses, supported by their intercession, let us fear nothing, only our lukewarmness. Let us be strong, let us pray and sacrifice so that in God's own time, but certainly with our help and dedication, the whole world will be embraced into the true empire of love, the Holy Roman Catholic Church. St. Peter and Paul pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. May I remind members of the Confraternity of St. Peter that there is today a plenary indulgence to be gained at the usual conditions. Thank you.